Hey everyone, welcome to After the Game. Jim Coyle not here with us right now. He will be with us shortly. He is currently at the post-game press conferences. We will soon be joined by him and national champion Ted Kitchell. But we also have another national champion with us right now, Dean Garrett, here to help us talk about what just transpired in Assembly Hall. Indiana ends the nine-game losing streak to Purdue, wins 68-65. Dean, I'll just go ahead and open it up to you because I'm sure you have a lot to say. Man, first of all, what a great, great game for Indiana basketball. Um, so nice to see Mike get his first signature big win. You know, and I and I was just telling somebody when he went that game over, I said that might have just put us into the tournament. Yeah. So right now, you know, that's what Mike's looking to do is try to get that in there. So you know what? Right now, what a great, great day for Indiana basketball for and for Mike Woodson. Absolutely. And a massive day for Rob Fennessy. 20 points, four rebounds, four steals, a block off the bench. This seems like it's been a long time coming for Rob, especially when you consider what he dealt with under the last coaching staff and, and how he's been working his way back from injuries and all sorts of stuff like that. What kind of how, how important was it for him to have his moment and this kind of be his game against a team like Purdue? You know what? First of all, you got to give Rob Fennessy a lot of credit. The kid stuck with it. He could have easily, easily have left Indiana. And he did not. He believed in the coaching staff, and they believed in him. And he just kept fighting and just getting it right, man. And days like today are the days that Rob's always going to remember. This game right here, Rob will be 60, 70 years old, and I promise you he'll be showing this this video to his grandkids. I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm proud of him. And what a great, great time for him to enjoy today because – once the night is over with, you got to move on. Absolutely. Uh, what a good night yeah, and and a lot of the a lot of why he was able to have such a good game is because of Trace Jackson Davis, your best player, getting in early foul trouble. Honestly, probably one of the only games that Trace in his entire career at Indiana has gotten into this kind of foul trouble, and the rest of the guards or just players in general stepped up in a huge way. That's a big testament to the coaching staff and a big testament to Indiana basketball. And even though we did win this game, I think it might have been a pretty good learning lesson for those guys that you can get back with with Trace not having a great game. You know, who would have thought that Trace having four, what, he had four points, five points? Yeah, that four points. they would still win this game? If you would have said that to us two hours ago, I don't think anybody who's listening to this right now would have said we were going to win this game. So mm. that's just another great testament to the coaching staff in Indiana and to the players, man, because they stuck with it. We'll go to a couple of these comments. Tim Tabalt says, I called it on the show today. How about the Rob shot instead of the Watt shot? I guess that's what we're, what's <laughs> going to take the place of that now for the time being. Uh, and hey, along with that, it brings back memories, obviously, of the Kentucky game and the court storming. We saw the court storming again tonight. That evidently is some sort of a controversial issue that – at least on my end of things, not that my opinion matters much. I don't really – it doesn't bother me that much the way that it does uh, some other fans or other people. But, Dean, what are your thoughts on on the, on the court storming? It doesn't bother me that they do it. What bothers me is that we're Indiana, you know, and maybe I should step back a little bit and understand that, you know, we're not where we were when I was there. But, you know, because I'm used to the court getting stormed on us. You know, <laughs> we beat people – it was just, okay, you go shake your hands and keep moving, but that's not where we're at right now. So I got to – maybe I need to bring it back a little bit and understand that it's still Indiana basketball where we're trying to get back to the the big heyday of Indiana basketball. So, you know, you beat Purdue today, number four in the country. Enjoy it tonight, and then I don't know who we play next, but enjoy it and get ready for the next game because don't go into the next game and lay an egg because then this game has really nothing to do with it. Yeah, they'll be staying at home for their next game. They have Michigan on Sunday, I believe. Another team that they have a fairly large losing streak to. I don't know if it's like six or seven games, but that's another yeah. one that they're they, – they've Jim has been saying this on his show all week. They've been getting rid of monkeys off their back. They had the road win against Nebraska this past weekend. Yes. Now yes. they're ending the streak against Purdue. You want to end this Michigan streak up next this weekend. Well, I didn't know they played Michigan. But, uh, yes, that now you can come back. And I know Michigan's struggling right now. They're not as good as everybody thought they would be in the beginning of the season. But if you could beat Michigan in Assembly Hall, and, you know, let's give Assembly Hall some credit too. I mean, 
people, if you've never been inside there as a visitor, I try to tell everybody that's a hard place to play because mm -hmm. it just is just the atmosphere, everything that comes along with it, the mystique, the history. And there's no doubt that you don't walk in there thinking about that. You see those banners sitting over on the side and not everybody who comes in there has banners sitting over there like we do. So you got to keep that momentum going. If we can beat Michigan, then you're really looking at something going on that's really good. You got that first road win. You beat your rival. Now let's go ahead and take care of business with, with Michigan and not don't lay an egg. Don't drop back. Don't take two steps forward and five steps back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back back to this game. Obviously, this is Mike Woodson's first game against Purdue as a head coach. What do you think that this means for him being a former player? I tell you, man, I, I saw when I was walking away to come and call you, I saw Mike throw his fist in the air. Yeah. So I know <laughs> right there what it meant to Mike. You know, just the whole fact. That's his first signature win. That's his first win against Purdue, and that's what he came here for. I mean, Absolutely, he's, especially he's with you. And I, I hate to go back. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, he's already doing what he came here to do. You know, he's got these guys playing hard. And that's what everybody who's listening to my voice right now wanted to see. You know, we were tired of looking at these guys not playing hard, not having energy, and lackluster. You know, they're the number one defensive team in the Big Ten. That means a lot. That means a lot. So to see them do that today, man, I'm so happy for – Indiana basketball, I'm so happy for Mike Woodson. That's just a great, great day for us. Let's go back to these comments here in a second. Again, uh, John here filling in for uh, for Jim Coyle as he's in the press conferences. He'll be joining us shortly. He wanted us to go ahead and get going because he knew people would be excited about the outcome of this game. We already had Dean Garrett with us. We're going to have Ted Kitchell on us on with us as well when Jim comes on. He should be with Jim live at Assembly Hall whenever they come with us. So let's go ahead and get back to some of these comments. A lot of people talking about Rob Schott. Uh, some people chiming in about the uh, the, store, co the court storming. Eric Seymour says, I hate they stormed the court like we was not expecting to win. Someone else had a different uh, opinion on it. They said, I'm so happy when they stormed the floor. That was awesome. And then someone else said something about the students. Kids storming the court is okay. Let them have fun. We waited a long time. So, I mean, there's different aspects to it. I definitely understand the whole – when you're a student, you're only in college for about four years. So – when you get an opportunity like this, especially the guys who have been sitting around these past several years not really having much to cheer about, I kind of understand the excitement of wanting to get out on there and celebrate with the rest of the team. Like I said, I'm just the old man that's just uh, get off my yard type of guy. <laughs> so, like I said, I understand it, but I just believe that we're Indiana basketball and we don't storm the court on people. They storm it on us. <laughs> Where do you think that this team is heading? Do you think that this team, this game, uh, is able to pro to propel this team, I guess, to to greater success as the rest of the season? I, I well, one hundred percent, I hope so. But I do watch the games, and I'm watching this team grow. And you know, and we all knew once the Big Ten season started, it was going to be there was going to be more learning lessons. You know, the schedule in the beginning wasn't all that great, mm -hmm. but now you're playing teams every night that are great no matter what i don't care if it's nebraska or what it's a big 10 team so seeing this team grow and like i said winning that first road game against nebraska was huge even though they're zero and eight or whatever they are that was huge for us and now you can you come home and you beat purdue now the michigan game will tell are you able mm -hmm. to bounce it hey let that go and now come right back be focused and ready to go against michigan because it's the Big Ten. It's not over. It's not yep. nothing over because you beat one game, you beat one team. You the next game is going to be just as hard. Yep, it's the classic setup of you get a big win, you're going to have a letdown the following game, and obviously you're talking about not wanting that to happen again. So obviously we'll have to wait until this weekend to see if that happens. Uh, Michael J. Music chimes and says only three turnovers tonight. I did not know that, but that is absolutely ridiculous. Especially I against what they had that. been known for. That is, I did not know that. That's that's huge. That is so huge because I know these guys run when they get to uh, so many of the turnovers. And only three turnovers. That right there took the place of Trace not having a great, great game. 
And I think we got a glimpse of what life after Trace Jackson Davis is going to be like. Obviously, you're always going to want to have a big man in there, but I feel like you saw a lot more of a free-flowing offense. I mean, that's why you saw the guards get more involved. Is that what you what you saw, Dean? That is what I saw, but like I said, shots were falling tonight. Yep. Shots were falling, so what's going to happen when the shots aren't falling? <laughs> what are you going to do then? Then you got to figure out how you're going to to figure out how to make make up for that. Because shots were falling and you only had three turnovers, that's the whole key. I'm glad he said that because I did not know mm -hmm. we only had three turnovers. But there's going to be another game later on this year that Trace is not going to have a great, great game. But you mm -hmm. can't you can't turn it over. And then hopefully that's not going to be an NCAA tournament. So hope they watch this film and they keep this going. William Hagenmeyer says, Dean, you look like you could still play. What do you think about that? <laughs> uh, not, not at all. <laughs> Not at all. No, thank you. I, I appreciate the compliment. That's so he's uh, got the party with you and the rest talking. of the team in New Orleans. Great memories. I'm sorry, what did he say? He says, got to party with Dean and the rest of the team in New Orleans. Great memories. Oh, man. Uh, Sam, those will always be great memories, man. I, I cherish those days and cherish those memories, man. That's that's uh, just part of part of my life, I can tell you that. So. It's uh, always great to think about it, hear about it, and talk about it. Let's see. We got uh, something from Dennis Hausman. Coach Woodson has made decisions throughout the season using his subs and playing them longer than fans think he should. It paid off tonight. The subs made the comeback and contributed throughout the game. I would say that is a fairly accurate statement, Dennis. Very accurate, Dennis. But you know what? He's going to have to count on those guys later on in this season, man. We're only in January. Still got February and March, and then you got the Big Ten tournament, and then God willing, and hopefully we get into the NCAA tournament. So we're going to need one of those guys to step up. So it's good that they get that learning lesson now and that confidence right now because they should all be walking around on cloud nine right now with that win and a lot of confidence. Mm. See, Bill Evans says offense can be inconsistent at times, but defense can be consistent every minute of the game. I think that is absolutely true. I mean, they said it multiple times in the broadcast tonight. You had the top team in the Big Ten on offense in Purdue going against the top team on defense in Indiana, obviously. And, and the defense prevailed tonight, which is obviously the way that you would think it would pan out to be. Well, you know what? That that goes to show you that uh, Mike Woodson played for Coach Knight because that's a, <laughs> that's a Coach Knight thing right there with that defense. And so that showed, that showed today, and that shows in his coaching and his teaching of this new team that he just took over, man. And that's just Indiana basketball. That's what everybody who's listening to my voice right now, we all love seeing that. We all love seeing the fact that that team's playing hard and they're playing defense because offense, you're going to miss some shots sometimes, but defense, there's no excuse. You got to come in there ready to play. And it showed these guys are ready to play today. Even though there's been, you know, there's all these players for the most part are players who were part of the previous regime. Do you feel like all of them have bought in at this point to what Woodson's been preaching about basketball? One hundred percent, one one million percent. They've already bought in to what he's talking about, and if they haven't, when they weren't all the way sure, they are right now in that locker room getting ready. So yeah, they they've all bought in. That is. I think all of us have. I think everybody who's listening to my voice now, who might have – some people I'm sure were kind of skeptical about Mike getting this job. But I think we've all bought in right now too because, yeah, they are the number one defensive team in uh, Big Ten. So that's that's huge for us. And that's going to win us a lot of games hopefully. And we just proved it today. Holding Purdue to 63 points, you said, 64? That, yeah, what is 60, that? 68, 65. I believe yeah, that's the possible. lowest scoring game of the year. What they did to Ivy in the first in the first quarter, that's first half, that's great. Yeah, it's crazy. One thing that reminds me, or when you were talking about buying into Mike Woodson a second ago, I don't remember the exact quote, but there was something in the press conferences this past week where Mike Woodson said he was talking to Rob Fennessy saying, you don't play for him anymore, you know, referring to the previous coach. You play for Coach Woodson now. And then it's crazy how you, you, you have that quote, and then you have what happened tonight and the little story element that you have from that there. Hey, you never know what it takes to get that trigger going in a guy's head. And uh, Mike obviously knows Rob very well so far 
in the little time that they've had together. And so he knew the right, the right word to, to get, to get to him. He knew the right phrase and he's 100% right. You don't play for him no more. So, you know, <laughs> you play here. and I'm pretty sure everybody who can hear my voice is so glad he doesn't play for him anymore. <laughs> Let's see. We got a question for you, Dean. Dean, what you think of Keith Smart getting his first victory as a head coach, interim head coach? Um, I was uh, very happy for Keith. Uh, I definitely reached out to him, and uh, we we all have a like a thread that we all talk on. So we were all on the thread, and then I reached out to him on my own and texted him. And Keith is like the president of the United States. You can never get in touch. <laughs> I don't think I still heard back from Keith after that. But I know he received it. But I, I'm so happy for him to get that win and to see him celebrating in his guys, embracing him. It kind of reminded me when we played against LSU, same way. They had that same feeling. They wanted to win that one for him. Like we wanted to win it for him also. And so just to see him in there and dance and be happy, man, I couldn't have been more thrilled. Heck, Yeah. And this is a, a comment I saw, not on on our comment thread, but on one of um, one of Twitter. I think it was Twitter earlier, and I don't know if it was during the game. But um, man, I'm losing my train of thought. If I think of it, I'll come back to it. But let me uh, let me get back to these other comments. I'm trying to multitask, do several things at once. Oh, and right on cue, here comes uh, Jim Coyle. I see he's getting ready here uh, on the side of Assembly Hall. I'm gonna go and welcome him in, see if he's ready. Jim, are you with us? Hey, J- hey, Jim, turn your mic up. I can hear you, but you're not very loud. Turn yourself up a little bit. All right, let's turn it up a little bit. How's that? Keep going. A little more. 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 There you go. Um, Sounds a lot better. A lot better. Got Ted Kitchell. going to go and hop off here. Going to bring in Jim Coyle and Ted Kitchell, and thanks for starting off with us. Here we go. Wow, what a big one tonight uh, here at the Simon Scott Assembly Hall, uh, Indiana, taking on the Purdue Boilermakers Lost nine straight. Ted Kitzel, Dean Garrett, both of you guys have played in this game. You know how important this game is. And, Ted, you especially know how important this game was to Mike Woodson. Uh, but, man, what a gigantic win for Indiana tonight. Yeah, it's a it's a huge win. Uh, there's no doubt about that. You're playing against a very good Purdue, Purdue basketball team. Uh, Matt Painter's a great coach. Uh, he's got – you got great players at, at all positions. I mean, inside they got the two big men. They've got Ivy, probably uh, as good a guard as there is in the in college basketball. They've got people that you know Stefanovic can shoot shoot the ball. So it's a, a, a really a, a well balanced team. And uh, Mike Woodson did such a good job. If you would have told me that Trace Jackson was only going to play eleven or twelve minutes and score like three or four points, five points, six points, whatever it might be, and Indiana still have a chance to win, I. I probably been a little bit surprised but uh, it was a great effort obviously rob fantasy really stepped up big in the first half keeping us in the in the basketball game and then to step up and take that shot at the end of the game uh i mean i think that'll pay huge dividends down the down the stretch dino how are you doing sir i'm good man good to see you jim ted how you doing man dean garrett joining us uh there as well uh happy to have you along my friend uh, what were your thoughts? What, what did you see from this team tonight? I, I cannot believe, like Ted just said, and I, that's the question I asked Woody inside. I said, if I'd have told you that Trace Jackson Davis was going to play eight minutes, whatever, whatever he played, and, and score single-digit points, did you did would you ever have thought you'd had a chance to win that game? But uh, how about that? I said that earlier before you got on, man. Uh, that that was just an amazing game for that team. And hopefully it was just a big learning lesson for those guys because they're going to have this kind of adversity later on because Trace is not going to play great every game the rest of this way. But that team took away a good win against Purdue, and they took a, a load of confidence with them that they can bounce back from anything. And all great teams are going to need that that one game that you can look back at and be like, hey, you know what, remember how we came back against these guys? We can do it again. And it's not going to be the same quality as players Purdue. And so take this one, and hopefully we learn. Ted, uh, they had lost nine straight. Uh, they had lost eight straight road games prior to this. They, they get that bunky off their back with the win at Nebraska. They had lost nine straight to Purdue. Now they take on a Michigan team here at home that they've also lost eight straight to, uh, which is uh, crazy that, to think that they had lost 15 straight to these teams. But 
they've gotten two of these monkeys off their back and the amount of confidence that this has to give them going into that game. Well, I think it'll give them great confidence. But the thing, I mean, I know the thing that Woody will worry about is is after getting such a big victory, what, are you going to have a letdown come back on, on Sunday? I mean, uh, I don't know exactly what time I've seen, noon or 3.30. I don't know exactly what time the game is going to be. But uh, you've got to have your team. And this is where it's so important to have leaders like a Rob Fennessy, seniors who have been through it and have been there, and they need to get, get this team ready to play. I mean, you can't expect Mike Woodson and his assistants always – getting you ready to play you can't always expect a, a huge game against your in-state rival purdue to get you ready to play you need to get yourself ready to play and get everybody as a le- leader as a as a team captain you need to get everybody else ready to play this basketball game because every game is important especially the ones here at home you just cannot lose games at home and expect to do well uh, in the big 10 well what he has preached that dino uh, take care of home and man they have uh, and they beat some good teams. They beat Ohio State and now uh, this Purdue team. Uh, back to this, Indiana, used this used to be a place where top four teams came to get knocked off. Uh, that hadn't happened for the last four or five years, but now here we go. We're back to it. Um, and this place was rocking. And I knew it was going to be an electric uh, atmosphere, Ted, and it was. Uh, Dean, I hate that you weren't here to see it, but, Ted, you were. I mean, how long has it been since you've seen Assembly Hall this this Well, the last time I saw it like this is when Tom Crean was here, and I think Michigan came to town, and we were number one, and they were number two. But other than that game, I mean, when I used to play, I mean, and it wasn't because they came to see me, but they came to see guys like Isaiah Thomas and Landon <laughs> Turner and Whitman. But, when, you know, and we were ranked in the top ten most of the time. I mean, this place was was buzzing at all at, at all times. So, I mean, that's got to be good for Woody's feeling that he's getting these people, you know, back engaged and, and, you know, getting them fired up about Indiana basketball and bringing this great tradition back to this this great program. And uh, I think this is a great starting point. I mean, the only thing I would change is I, I want this team to expect to beat Purdue, you know, not to rush the floor after you – it's like you've won a national championship <laughs> – I mean, these fans and these people, they need to get to a point where they expect to win these games and, and big games like this and uh, and play well like they did tonight. Yeah, Dino, this was a game that you loved, man. This was a big man's game. You talk about big men all over the place tonight. You know, Zach Eady and Travion Williams for, for Purdue, but, of course, Indiana. Trace Jackson Davis, who didn't get to spend much time on the court, but his replacement, Michael Durr, did a yeoman's job coming in. And Race Thompson, uh, as always, providing – the race Thompson minutes that he gives you. I, I think I cut you cut off just a little bit, but no, it was, man, it was great to see, man. I would have loved to play against a big guy like Eddie because he is so big. And I think I would probably be faster and definitely think I could jump higher than him. So I would have been looking forward to that matchup the whole time, but yeah, it's nice to see basketball in my eyes back a little bit where there are big guys. Cause I can't watch the NBA game because there really aren't any big guys that are out there playing. <laughs> so it was nice to sit there today and see Eddie. And it's nice to see guys dunk the ball. It was nice to see a nice hard foul against Ivy today, even though he jumped up and ready to do all that. That was a good hard foul. It wasn't nothing malicious about it. Just he didn't. You're not going to dunk it in this place. That's all I've that seen was. a lot worse in this game. This this Indiana yeah. Purdue game. I've seen a lot worse, worse and, and felt a lot worse in that place. So <laughs> yeah. it's not that was that was a great play, and I was just loving to see that kind of basketball being played. And I'm glad it was only a flagrant one. And I thought that was a little bit too much. Just been a foul. He grabbed his arm, but it was so nice just to see hard playing basketball because you don't get to see it every night on TNT and all these other places. See, that's the same thing that I see, Dean, is, you know, I see these teams playing the way Coach Knight's teams used to play. I mean, you didn't know if you could outscore teams, but you knew that they were going to come with it every night. They were going to defend. They were going to play hard. They're going to block out. They're going to do all the little things. And Woody has them doing those type things. I mean, that's the thing that I appreciate coming to watch. I know what I'm going to get. I'm going to get a great effort from everybody. And who knows, is Trace going to be the guy? Is Fennessey going to be the guy? Uh, I thought Galloway did a hell of a job coming in the game and giving us yeah. some energy and spirit. 
you know, but that's uh, that's what I see most of all is I know what I'm going to get when I come to watch this team play, and I am very, very proud to watch this team play basketball. There were you some hit it on the head, Ted. You hit it on the head. Yeah. And you said you said you hit it on the head, man. You said uh, Coach Knight, and you're right because what he is a part of Coach Knight, and so are you and I, and so what we look at in basketball is what he taught us and what we had to listen to for our time there. So watching that today, yeah, that had Coach Knight written all over it. Just watching the defense yep. of these guys plays has Coach Knight written all over it. And it's so nice to see Indiana basketball, even though it's not Coach Knight, we got back to some kind of similar basketball that everybody has been used to watching for all these years. Three turnovers, Ted. Can you? I mean, well, I mean, I I, 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 I went into where the where Woody and some of the coaches were, and uh, one of the guys, not a coach or anything to do with the university, just a friend, came over and says, he says, he says, Woody thinks they have they're trying to win the Big Ten, and I said, well, of course they are. <laughs> I said, why the hell would you suit up and play if you weren't expecting to? I never, ever walked on this floor and thought I was going to lose. Was that because Bob Knight had me prepared? I felt like, yeah, I was prepared. There were people around me. There were a lot of times we were outmanned. But if we did what he had set up, and if they do what Woody has set up and his coaches have set up, you have a chance to win. I never thought I was going to lose. And, yeah, Mike Woodson is out there expecting his team to compete and to win a Big Ten championship. I mean, I'm just telling you. Will they? I don't know. But come come watch because it's, it's, it's worth the money. I'll tell you that. Uh Dean, you've been down that road. Yes, I have, man. And Ted's hitting it right on the head. I've never walked in that building, especially in that building right there, where we didn't think we were going to win. I mean, that's one of the hardest places. I, I talked to so many friends that I have played against in college basketball, the Todd Mitchells, the Gary Grants. I talk to these guys all the time, and they all say how hard it is to play in that building. You know, Ted and I don't see it that that way because we enjoy playing in there. But those guys didn't enjoy playing there. And I'm pretty sure that Purdue team that's getting on that bus doesn't enjoy playing in there either right now. And they yeah. realize it. Just like Kentucky doesn't want to play us no more in that building. Yeah. They realize it. It's hard to play in that place. Well, especially when it is like tonight. Like it used to be. Like it always it was, was. Like it was when you were here. Like it was when you were here. Like when I was in school. I, I, I've been, I could tell leading up to this, uh, talking on the show, I'm like, this place is going to be electric. The corners, the corners were full. When the balcony, corners are full, yep. watch out. The I mean, balcony. Yeah. You, you, oh, when the, the top, when, when the I top got is here. Cool. Yeah, yeah, when I the top and the corners hours. are full, watch out. Yeah. Two hours before the game, I arrived, and Dean, you know where Cook Hall is now, next door. Yes. Yes. Beside that, there's Wilkinson Hall, where the wrestling and volleyball uh, teams are. The line started. Out yeah. the side of Assembly Hall, it came in front of exactly Cook Hall the students and wrapped down past Cook Hall, across the alley, past Wilkinson Hall. Then it turned right up. Is that 17th Street? Yeah, yeah. It yeah. Turned up yeah. 17th Street to the corner and then turned back. Yeah, kids were they were they were back. I, I've never seen sure. a line that long ever. It was great. And you know what? I'm, it's just so nice to see that the guys when they got to the game and they saw that line that you're talking about, they came ready to play. That's, they, they were ready. That's the biggest thing. They were ready to play and to beat Purdue. Like you said, we expected to beat them. Those guys expected it. And yep. that's just great to see, man. We haven't seen that in so long. And that's so. That's what we'll see on Sunday. Can they get themselves ready after a huge victory? Yes. You know, puts them right where they want to be. Now, can they get themselves ready to play another top 20 basketball team in Michigan? Michigan's starting to play well. I mean, I know they've lost a few games. They're getting people back. They're starting to play better basketball. And uh, you know that Juwan Howard's going to have, have his troops ready to play. Absolutely, yeah. because they've kind of, you know, they, they hit their little stretch, and they want to get back into the exactly. Big Ten race. Sure uh, Purdue just beat Illinois to get back into the Big Ten race because had they lost yeah. that game, they would have been out. And can you imagine if they lost Illinois and then turn around and lose to Indiana? Yep. Uh, one of the oh, top yeah. teams in the country would be out of the Big Ten already yep. uh, for the race. So, But, yeah, it, it's going to be a crazy race uh, for the Big Ten championship because we don't know who the best team is. Nope. Man, that's, why, that's, that's why they play. That's why we, we <laughs> come, we come watch them play. That's why, 
That's why I went to Indiana, because you want to play in that kind of atmosphere. You want to play in that kind of a league. That's Big Ten basketball. That's the best. But uh, I can tell you, I mean, one of the one of the things that you'll find at the end, and the reason like a Michigan State has been so successful over the last 20 years, is the toughness that they they acquire throughout the year. I mean, yeah. Tom, you know, Izzo is on them, and he makes them not only are they physically good, but they're mentally really strong. And I felt like that's where Indiana was always better. When Coach Knight you yeah. know, was coaching here, I always felt like the reason we were better is because mentally we – we were we were more prepared. We were we were yep. more difficult. We could handle difficult situations, and uh, you know the toughness mentally, the mental toughness that you need to have to win big games. And uh, I think that's something that Woody is already we see in in this team. I tell you, Ted, we weren't the most talented team, but we were definitely the most smartest and prepared. Yeah, that hands down. And that yeah. came across so many times with Bob Knight teams. I mean, you go back and you looked and watch how many of his teams had good players, but they would also have so many role players who played their roles. And, man, they did it to perfection. And that was – it seems like you guys played for him, but he was to always do it perfect every time, which I know that's impossible, but do it right, do it right, do it right every time. Yep. I mean, and uh, you see what he got out of it. He got a lot of Big Ten championships, and he got three national championships. So, uh, yeah, hell of a lot of great players. Pretty, pretty successful. Uh, Johnson with 18 points tonight. Rob Finnessy with 20 points tonight. Those two guys, the guards. That's funny because so much has been made about Indiana's guard play. And, man, oh, man, it comes up big in the biggest game of the year. Well, and those two guys in particular. I mean, a lot of guys have been on X. Uh you know, I still feel like he's the guy you need out on the floor. He's your best point guard. He, he, you know, once in a while, like at, at Wisconsin, the second half, he got a little, got a little in a hurry and took some bad shots. And uh, you know, a couple of games where we've lost, you know, they wanted to look to him. But the thing I love about him is he's not afraid. I want my point guard to not be afraid. I don't want him out there saying, "Oh boy, I hope I don't make a mistake." Oh, I hope you know, don't I don't want that. I played with Isaiah Thomas. He was not afraid. No, you know. And that's the thing I see with, you know, X is going to make some mistakes here and there, but he's going to make some big plays for you too. And that's the same thing with fantasy. We've watched Rob fantasy over the past three years kind of play scared. Yep. Tonight he came in and he looked like he said the hell with it. Hey, they give me shots. I'm, t- I'm knocking them down. I can knock these shots down. Absolutely. And uh, so I think that again, that, that, that is the mental toughness that comes with it that Woody is building into this team and the confidence that he has restored in some of these players. Well, you'll hear about it all tomorrow, but Rob Finnessy and, and Coach had a conversation before today's game. He talked about it. Both of them talked about it. Uh, and how he just basically said, hey, if nobody's ever in your corner, I'm always in your corner. Yeah. Uh, and that's something that he hasn't seemed to have had here, and it, it's made a big difference. I don't want to keep it too long because I know we did, and you got to get home. Yes, sir. Uh, Thanks I for having me. I appreciate it. Always, Dean, great brother. to see you. Take you care of yourself. Too, too, all right. All right. Dino, brother, uh, it's always great to have you on as well, too, man. Look forward to doing this again whenever you can jump on. I love uh, having both of you guys on. Hey, I, appreciate I appreciate the gotta time. I appreciate the time. you got to get you yeah. into Bloomington. Thank you, guys. Oh, man. I, yeah, well, you know what? It's cold as heck out there right now, too. Who are you so. kidding? I'm here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's 65 out here in Las Vegas right now. So I hear you, man. Man, I got to get mentally prepared to come back out there and take care of that cold. I hear you, buddy. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Great. Uh, appreciate Ted Kitchell, of course, as well. And most importantly, thanks to you guys. Thanks, John, the producer. We hey, appreciate thanks, you all as well. We're back tomorrow uh, for India, Indiana Sports Beat Radio. We'll have all the post game uh, from Mike Woodson, Rob Fennessy, Xavier as well. Until then, I'm Jim Coyle. I will see you on the radio.